<laughs> All right. Stop the side chatter now. No. Um, so what we would like to do is, you know, figure out how to actually you know, just ship this talk and get that moved on because we think it's useful to do. Mm -hmm. And so to that end, having a smaller group actually just talk about practically what we should do, I think is totally fine. I guess while we'll, we'll see if a couple others join, I think I was expecting some other people. Um, on this editorial PR, I think the only thing we can uh, bike shed on is the name of this section. I, I don't particularly care what it is, but I don't know, the existing title felt not totally representative of the whole section. It's like when we're going over in the abstract, like in the introduction, we're like section two highlights historical issues with difficulties and transitions, to new protocol features. And then this does, the title doesn't seem to be quite summing it up, just saying like protocol implementations are imperfect. It's like, well, but why does that matter? Uh, it, I guess the question is, is that the only reason and probably not, not really the case. Right, right. Um, well, anyway, well, maybe it is. So well, um, one okay. of the things that we, we've observed is that, for instance, in, in TLS, the fundamentally the design is good. Mm -hmm. But that didn't prevent it from being impossible to to evolve using that design. Right. Because, so, because, it, because there are bugs and this kind of highlights, you know, you can have bugs in the endpoints. You can have effectively like bugs in the deployment where you just don't use it. And you can have bugs in the middle boxes that even if your endpoints are perfectly fine, they can do bad things. Tommy, could you show the like editor's copy as opposed to the markdown? It's somewhat less of a pain. I fixed yeah. the links sorry. for it to work. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. No worries. Thanks. A little bigger. Um, and I and I realized that uh, I think well, thanks. I think thanks to MT's tools, you can. It also works for branches, which is awesome. I didn't realize that. Yeah, so, like for your PR, you can actually just show the modified version if you want. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, how, I mean, how to sum this up? Quite right. Um, Are we just bike shedding the the title for the section? Co correct. It, it was the only point of slight disagreement on the PR. Um, the so like. The, Tommy rephrased it, uh, and me like I, I was kind of not too happy yeah. with the rephrasing. I was trying to say imperfect implementations limit protocol evolution of like. If like, if I'm looking here, it's like, I don't know these top level things. I, I want to like, what, what's the problem with imperfect implementations? Is like, what does that mean, lead to? I see. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I. I mean. I. I don't feel too strongly here. I, uh, I. The only thing that we're missing with yours is the fact that it implies that all implementations are imperfect, which I fundamentally agree with. Um, so <laughs> but it's not something. Uh, as a wise man would say, I'm not going to lie. It was almost like yeah. This. Bugs. Bugs and bugs in implementations limit protocol evolution. Um, yeah. All right. We'll bike shit another time. Going oh. to issues. So that's that we're going to productively discuss. So I think I had said I wanted to start with. Chris, can you put on headphones or mute, please? We're getting echo. Sorry. So we're going to start with 34. Um, you can always run the web client. That probably won't generate echo. <laughs> Touche. Yeah, cool. So the first thing that stood out to me in my last pass of this was we have this section. Um, independency is better. I'm um, saying, so, you know, active use, 
dependency is better. Caution is advised to assume, to avoid assuming that building dependency on extension is sufficient to ensure that it's going to be available long term. So it seems like we want to be able to point out an example of, like, I, I guess, you know, if this were to happen in HTTP, and correct me if I'm wrong, Martin, it'd be like, hey, we have these great headers, but for some reason in 2005, people stopped creating new headers. And then at, after that, everyone ossified on a certain level, a certain set of them and said, anything new out of this is probably going to be an attack. Let's reject it all. Blah. <laughs> You're talking about the HTTP scenario where you've got all these um, web application security things that sit in the yeah. front and say, oh, this is what the web looks like in April 22nd, 2021. And that's yep. it. Exactly. Um, and so I think this feels very compelling, but needs needs a footnote or an example um, to really flesh that out. So, yeah, I'm not sure that that's exactly the the point that I I picked up with my comment there. It's probably more along the lines of all those cases where the extensions exist, but then it was a finite set. And it never went anywhere. The only thing that I'm personally aware of is um, uh, Taylor signature algorithms had a a nice problem okay. in a couple of implementations. Um, I don't want to draw on TLS too often in the doc, yeah. but um, that's that's a pretty good example. Well, uh, we had a, we had a finite set, and it turned out that some people assumed it was finite. Why not just Got the it. server name type? Oh, that's already in the doc. Yeah. Oh, isn't that okay. an example of exactly this problem, though? Yep. Of like never using it. Yeah. Where, where, where do we mention that one? That's in uh, examples of disuse. Right there. Yeah. Got it. I see. Although, I mean, in this section, we're trying to say that essentially dependency is not enough to eliminate the the dangers of disuse. That it is uh, not not sufficient to solve the problem. And arguably, arguably, the example of SNI. Like you didn't have to speak the SNI extension in order to be able to speak TLS at all. It wasn't a core dependency of the protocol, although. Well, to well, speak TLS, like practically speaking on the web, like if you send Google yes. a client home about SNI, they're like, go away, you're <laughs> whatever. Right. Um, but I mean, there certainly was TLS without SNI. Yeah, for, yeah. for a long time, you could you couldn't rely on it being present, but that's but, that's... but let, let's uh, just to clarify here, Tommy. The mm -hmm. the fact that SNI was used is not really the relevant point. It's the fact that anything uh, other types of names inside the SNI were never used. That's the that's the point here. The the extensibility yeah. joint of the uh, TLS extensions was used, and that's why that one hasn't rusted shut. It's the other one that did. Yeah, it's, I'm talking about the, the type byte specifically for the, the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. understood. Um, so, so, I mean, going to the, Martin, what you were trying to point to for signature algorithms, um, like clearly, I mean, you have to speak signature algorithms to work at all, but it was enough of a finite set that you're like, eh, these are the ones I support. And yeah, and, that, and it, it meant that there was no way to add the set and so the, the core thing that we're talking about here is what what makes it possible to add to the protocol and um the fact that we had something um didn't necessarily mean that that um there was any any chance that things could be added i think that's probably the caveat that we're looking for rather than an, ex an example though. where is it now Oh, the, the oh, yeah, that's kind of there already. Yeah. In the last paragraph. Yeah.
maybe a back reference to the SNI thing would, would suffice. Yeah, that's true too. Um, I wonder Sounds if, good. yeah. Um, so in the examples of disuse, we have yeah, we have a bunch of TLS right already. So we have TLS version, we have SNI, we have RR codes, and then the counter example of SNMP. Yeah, so I, I think this probably is sufficient. Um, and maybe even point to the fact that you know version negotiation itself. It's kind of a good example of something that had multiple values was a requirement of the protocol to speak so it had dependency and yet it, it, it was not um, it was not able to be reused because implementations had a narrow interpretation of it yeah so i think actually pointing out to the uh, version yeah yeah Okay, I think we can do that and I can throw some text for that. Very good. I think that's sufficient. All right, moving on. 36 was next. Yeah. 36, yeah, this is um, kind of intentionally a rat hole um, comment, but it, it just, <laughs> the, the current text, uh, you know, just ending this pair, essentially ending this section on active use of like, we have no advice for you. I mean, it, yeah. I, I get it, but it's just uh, it's an interesting effect. So the, the theory there that I have at least is that um, as long as the, the cycles of addition are faster than the, the product cycles of the people who are going to ossify, then we're probably okay. But um, yep. anything slower than that is is going to be a problem potentially. Um, but it's probably it's really like kind of what I was thinking too. But I mean, do we think we should shy away from saying anything like that? Well, it's going to depend, right, on on a whole lot of factors, right? So if if you've got a product cycle that's a month long because you're actively responding to things, mm -hmm. uh, then you might forget by the time that you put out the fifth version of the protocol that things might change and you might accidentally ossify on that. But there's also like counter examples to that where you, exactly. could, you could ship stuff uh, or, um, after I guess the middle boxes have updated, for example, like say they had some like wonky like machine learning that was like, I'm gonna try and learn what the shape of TLS looks like. And then eventually like they learn what TLS looks like and then you try to change something and they fall over or whatever. like. You've done things in the right order, but like it just took time for the ossification to occur for whatever reason. Right. I don't think there's yeah, any. I, mean, I, would, I would assume that you were, the thing that you were trying to change on that subsequent update was sufficiently different from all the things you had been actively using or increasing before. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't yeah. know. Like, I, I don't. I think just saying it's out of scope is probably fine. <laughs> I, I, I'm partly wondering if there's something slightly more useful we can say to, to say, you know, it's not in scope for this document, but, you know, future thought or future work could be done thinking about this. I, part of what makes me interested in this is we, we've had these discussions around opportunities to do coordination increasing, and we can talk about that more later as well, but it feels like some of these coordination schedules may be similar con considerations to what we want to do for active use and like how often it makes sense to actively use or change this thing. So not a problem we can solve in this document, but it's almost like there are multiple things in here pointing to other work or other discussions, which are 
you know, not solvable problems here. Hmm. This is too. This is too hard. I don't know how you'd phrase it, but like it, it's certainly like future work, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, right. I'm not even sure that it's it's future work that would be generically applicable either. So if you look at um, something like HTTP, the, mm -hmm. there's nothing we can do, um, and there's probably nothing we need to do because there are so many people out there already putting new stuff on on top of the protocol that like, anyone anyone trying to ossify on this one would would find it very challenging but well so one thing there uh was the discussion that we had with like mnot uh some number of months ago about like doing some coordination and having all the browsers like start greasing at the same time to kind of power through this uh you know to you know power will wash the rust away kind of deal and that's something we could potentially talk about as a technique i I think we'd have to try it, see, and yeah. like run the experiment, get the results, and then we could say something about it. That's that's really where I'm I'm at with this one. I, I agree. Um, so I mean, to some degree, like, is is it worth you know? I guess, is, should we just not say anything? Should we say kind of both within Greece and here, like? More experiments need to be done. Yeah, I'd, I'd be out. happy with rewording that one. Yeah, yeah. To sort of say we, we don't have anything for you at the moment, but uh, yeah. hmm. And possibly also noting what Martin said, where like whatever you might learn from HTTP may not equally apply to like you know Quick or TLS or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So what makes sense for one protocol? Yeah, it sort of says that on the uh, as the first sentence of that paragraph there. But... Yes, that's true. Um, yeah, that is, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, covered. and it's interesting, it says deployments rather than protocols, which is probably more correct as well. I think it is more correct. Um, I mean, certainly different protocols can bias towards different deployment models, but fundamentally it is that deployment model and who's involved, what are their release cycles that makes this um, something to work with. Yeah, we can keep having those wonderful conversations with people who use TLS for not the web. And yes, the, the constraints are completely different. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, yeah, we can rework that a little bit. Um, very good. Um, since we're doing pretty good on time, one, this is pretty editorial, but Going through this, it felt that we had you know, just structurally a bit of redundancy between our early examples of disuse and then the section later that was essentially saying, if you don't use it, it becomes unusable. Um, I don't know. Uh, how, how are you right. thinking of this structurally? Um, is, like, is there a rationale to the split? of kind of which examples go where? No, it's probably uh, the intent was to have the first one sort of cover the um, problem statement and the second one 
describe the general shape of the way we might address that problem. But I don't think I've got that right. Yeah, it feels like we have like, you know, negative things, positive things, one other negative thing. Yeah, I think that's probably um, probably a shuffling thing that we can do here. So the, the class E address space probably belongs back into two. Right. And um, there's some other text there that might need to move. So you're right. There's just some shuffling might be the right yeah. way to do this. And maybe maybe once that's done, we can find some things to cut. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I was kind of wondering, like, do we do we need kind of a third point in this in this section in section three? Uh, you know, are we happy with it being like active use? It's good. Dependency is good. Uh, yeah, the title would be wrong, I think, in that case. Yeah. If, if you if this was to be retained, I think it's it's about. Um, yeah, maybe it can go. Maybe it can go. I think we could probably fold the the positive bits into the previous section, and then the negative bits can go up into two two and. Okay. Yeah. Let's work through that. Yeah, I, I kind of wanted to mention that I I got on this very late, um, so I used the time to go through the document, read it, and at least in my prior state, it felt pretty good. Mm -hmm. Um, I did raise one issue that was in the text around this class E stuff. Uh, you can take a look at that later. Uh, I feel too tired to ex even explain it right now. Maybe it wasn't right. Um, uh, so I think I'm going to fold from this call um, and go to bed. Sounds good. And just, uh, uh, sorry. Wish to the Thank you. Uh, you. That was this issue you just filed right now. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So th thanks for that, Yari. All right. Yeah. Right, okay, so Yari's point's good there, and we that's that's just about expanding on on what the text says there. Mm -hmm. We okay. negotiated the text during a meeting, so I'm not sure that it's it's perfect. Yeah. No, this is this is a good point though. All right. That sounds good to me. Cool. Uh, I'm happy with that. So for some of these um, editorial things, Martin, do you want me to propose things? Did you want to try to reshuffle things? I'm happy either way. Why don't you take uh, a take a stab at it, Tommy, okay. and we'll we'll work together on it. Great, that's great. Okie dokie. Often uh, these I'm things just need a bad attempt. Yep, yeah. and you can polish the <laughs> polish yeah. the pole into a diamond. All right. David, are we trying to say something? Oh, just uh, well. So this, you got this one covered, but I'm happy to spend some time and provide text as well. Great. Yeah. Do you, you let's um switch over to? I was going to have you chat about for greasing and thoughts about. Do we mention quick in here? Um, so, so sounds good. You want to take over the minutes? I put the link to the cool. doc in the um in the chat. In the chat. Yeah. All right. And. Uh, Remind me which issue I was going to discuss again. You told me yesterday, and then I've said uh, 32. Just all, 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 all the greasing ones. Yeah, so right. Let's start with 32. Okay. All right. And let's see if I can share using this web UI. Do, 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 do. Oh, there's a share button. The meeting type requires that you become the presenter before sharing content. Okay. How do I do that? Uh, do I reclaim host role or yeah, can, I, can I pass you the magic baton? Yeah, you can just drag it to him, I think. Well, maybe I can. Uh, I can do it now. I have bequeathed it upon you. Ooh, yes, I now have a share button. <laughs> <laughs> Bequeath? Like, who died? <laughs> uh... Application window, discuss greasing, share. All right, uh, can you see it? Yes. Cool. Uh, oh, this is brilliant. The uh, 
Oh, there we go. Yeah, the, the Chrome sharing thing goes over all the other controls. It's like, obviously, the bottom of the screen in the middle is uh, prime real estate. Uh, yeah, so the, the document does a really good job about uh, talking like, um, or what we can do when we're creating a new protocol. And so like, you know, quick, and I think, I mean, in a way you can really tell that uh, this was written by someone involved with the early design of quick, because like quick is the poster child for all the good ideas in here. Um, but it doesn't talk too much about how to like uh, retrofit them. Cause like, that's what we did with for TLS, but we now don't necessarily tell that story or, you know, it doesn't say like, how could we do this for like, you know, I don't know, we could grease HTTP headers in theory, for example. Do we have thoughts there? Should I just uh, write a PR, see uh, if there are any ideas in there? Yeah, so I was gonna come at this, I, I thought you might be coming at this from a different angle, um, which is good. Um, yes, it does sort of not really talk about the difference between new and retrofit, um, there's different opinions on this piece. Um, there are some people who believe that the retrofit into TLS was part of the reason why greasing was so successful in finding bugs. Um, and those people are less convinced that new protocols are the right place to put this sort of thing. Really? I mean, right. the, I still remember, uh, I was telling Tom this yesterday, that uh, I tried to interrupt with Apple in London and it crashed their implementation and you went, what? Because I, and it was because I had a, a transport parameter that they didn't know and you went, oh shit. And you wrote the PR like right away to add the greasing. Uh, like that, that was kind of like in the moon moment and it was the right thing to do too. And, um, and so like to that end, is it worth, you know, even just saying like you know, greasing is useful even when you're first developing a protocol because it, you know, it, helps highlight these things you may not be thinking of from the very beginning. Um, yeah, that, that might work. I think for new protocols, the, the better advice is to just use extendability mechanisms from the start, right? Whenever you have a use an uh, extendability mechanism, you should make sure you just use it with the initial version. Yeah, and, so and we've said we that do from the outset. Um, I think the exactly, that's, that's another section. But I think that's like, that's why I would distinguish here because that's always the better option. Only if you got yourself into um, a dead end, then you have to start doing this ugly hack, which is called greasing. Well, so I guess Mary, Mary to unpack that a bit, um, is what you're referring to mainly the fact that you have to reserve given code points as grease only code points? Yeah. For me, that's more a hack than a feature. But like, for example, like even in Quick, like Quick does reserve, like it, it chose to, as a new protocol, like essentially reserve based on an algorithm, right? Like which code points shall forever be. It, it, well, it reserved them and also it encourages implementation to use those greasing code points. And uh, and that actually helped. Uh, it wasn't just Apple. Like we, for example, Google didn't handle grease HTTP frames at the beginning because we did, We needed to write a special parser for the, uh, like, dump the data on the ground as it comes in because someone could send you four gigabytes of grease frame and you don't want to put those in memory before you drop them. I guess, um... so, yeah, it, it helps you to detect um, implementation limit limitations um, very efficiently, right? But it also um, has a cost. And if you could have the same effect by just using any kind of extendability mechanism, that would always be better. I mean, yes, so... I understand that, like, in, in practice, it's easier to just grease. Yeah, I, I suspect that this is really just a matter whether it be a new protocol or an, or an old one of providing filler so there's going to be points in time where you add new stuff and those events will be important right and ultimately you want that cadence to be fast enough that um, you never have any any p 
period where no one encounters anything new such that they can deploy something that ossifies on whatever the current state is. Um, and so Greece allows you to uh, artificially increase that cadence, uh, which is part of the reason why I think that Mark's enterprise with HTTP headers was never really necessary because the cadence in HTTP is such that it's sufficient. Well, his his assertion was that the, the the rate of change in browsers as clients was not sufficiently fast, which is funny because I find it way too difficult to keep up. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, but yeah, it's interesting. But like when the uh, some of the sexy H headers went out, I mean, they had bugs with some crazy like backend Apple servers that were being dumb. So right. that clearly uh, would have benefited, you know, potentially from those types of things being greased more. Um, so maybe, maybe so I guess the question is, what's the right frequency? I think there was even an issue for it. Um, we, we discussed this just before you arrived. Okay, sorry. <laughs> it, was right, it was right as you were arriving. Um, and I think what we discussed there was to say, Let's, um, you know, I personally think that's, you know, that's kind of like a future research thing or a topic we can discuss more, but like we can just more concretely say here, you know, we don't know what it is, more experimentation needs to be done. It's going to be per protocol and per deployment. Um, and then I think we should have that discussion in a, in a program meeting in the future. Um, going, going back to this, like the concern you bring up, Miria, though, um, I wonder if it's worth like saying in the Greece section very explicitly how like the the mechanism that TLS uses is one algorithm that's suited to its code points on an existing protocol, but maybe you know expand the definition to say like you can do it many many different ways because you know for quick. Quick said, we have this enormous number space, and so we're just going to reserve, you know, parts of it, and it's very, very cheap. So it doesn't have that cost problem that you're referring to. But you could also have a grease mechanism that says, you know, like, these numbers are not going to be forever allocated. It's not like they're going to be blacklisted forever off of the analyst. Instead, it's, you know, based on the the year it is, or the version of the protocol. And as the version goes up, you know, you, you can open up more and more space or like you could come up with mechanisms that don't have the problems that I think you're referring to. Um, and you could do that during your new protocol design to make sure that you can both grease and have more room than you would ever be able to take up. Yeah, we talked to, talked with David Benjamin about this on, on a number of occasions for, for TLS. Yeah. And his idea was that we have a a tweak of the month where yeah. everyone agrees that there's going to be the one change to the protocol, right? So we turn, we, we reverse the order of the client ra random or something like that, right? And the problem there is that it just comes down to coordination problem. And... We're, we're being lazy in, in quick. We're just saying that these versions are reserved forever. Yep. And that's easy because we do it. We do that once. Yep. We don't have to worry about coordinating the changes. But you could. You could say, well, you know, for 2021, these, this is the, the model. And then 2022 is a different one. Right. And, and so the, the, the coordination can be based on time. It can be based on other numbers in the protocol, like on a version or something else, it can be based on a nonce. Like who, you know, who knows what it is? Um, I mean, but, so so we actually discussed this a little bit yesterday in Quick. Uh, yeah. The idea being that if we have compatible version negotiation, we can start mucking with this stuff, and that could be fun. Um, you don't actually completely need compatible version negotiation because you know if you just say, "Well, use the one you have," but uh, it's still like it allows us to do more things like this where. Maybe Chrome starts minting, you know, unilaterally, and Google start, you know, minting a new version every six months, and we tell people, "Hey, we have this one. If you want to play along, you can." Uh, we'll still support the main one, but if you know there's enough, you know, maybe a second browser or you know a second CDN that plays along, it'll help break some um, some boxes that don't uh, that can't handle this. 
Yeah. Yeah. And the, and the question is whether the, the effort involved in coordinating that is justified by the benefits that, that come from it. And this is, I think, one of the, the key core debates about greasing as well is, mm -hmm. is the effort that we're putting in, you know, reserving all the code points, sending all the extra stuff and writing all the code, does that justify um, it's, is that effort justified relative to the, the benefits that we're seeing? And certainly we saw benefits from greasing TLS early on. That's because TLS is shit. Um, and, uh, and by that, I mean the deployment ecosystem is, is just a complete disaster. And it could be the case that, that quick sort of rots in the same way and our, our efforts are justified. Or it could be that we are being aggressively defensive and we're effectively wasting our effort. But, but at the same time, it, 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 like as you see, you know, with hey, you, you crash any implementation that tries to come in that doesn't handle new things. So you're right. stopping them from. Yeah. Right. So I think, like, one thing we really want to say here for sure, and I think actually the, the introduction of the document says this very clearly, is like, if you design an extensible EP mechanism, you also have to make sure you use it, otherwise it will ossify, right? That's the important part. Like, how you use it um, is a different question, and, like, I would be really careful to just see, look at TLS and see that greasing worked very well and just take this as an example or, like, an evidence that greasing works well everywhere, while there are other ways to just use these extensibility mechanisms. So Here's a question in front of us all, um, because I, I think maybe you're right that it's important to have active use. I think it is important also to have like artificial use, like to have the ability to do artificial use of the extension point when you don't actually have a new protocol thing to do. Like we can't rely on, if we need a monthly cadence, we can't rely on someone coming up with a, a new standard or a new experiment every month. We need to be able to have filler. Um, and my question is, is Greece like, because we're, we're, we're able to define things in here, right? Um, and Greece has a meaning in TLS, but do we want to define Greece as any mechanism that has, that introduces filler or artificial use, or is it specifically this style and there's a broader category, which we call filler or artificial use, which includes Greece and Greece being like reserving code points. I think anything you do to disambiguate the use of Greece would be good. We, we like in ECH, for example, we we say like this is Greece, but really it's like not Greece. It's this it's this right. fake like cover traffic. Um, yeah. So I, right. I think so yeah, it's like better use. terminology here. Um, well, it serves more. It's more than that, but um, yeah, that is one of its purposes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. You're also trying to blend in to a crowd. Um, right. Or create a crowd to blend yeah. in. I, I think that just reading through the section here, there's probably um, the, uh, probably the real point that Miriam might be looking for here is is what David wrote down in the comment, which is the the artificial stuff is no real substitute for the real stuff when it comes to to making sure that you can use those extension code points. Because if if people are hard coding their code to throw away everything, um, yeah. Oh, no, that's true. Then you, you may end up in a situation where you just can't deploy it, um, even though the greasing stuff gets through. Um, and so, um, the 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 idea that grease is is filler for the real stuff is probably something that we could say more directly. Yeah. So, I, as I said, I think in in the introduction, it's actually that's what the document is saying. But later on, basically, you have active use kind of as as a say on the same level as greasing. While I see greasing as rather you know something that can be a substitute to active use if you don't have it. So maybe it should be sub subsection there or whatever. Just like to make sure the focus is on really this message. Like you know, if you have extensibility, you have to make sure that it's used and that it can be used in the future. Otherwise, it's not worth nothing. That's actually not a bad suggestion, even though I don't like adding extra levels to the tree. Um, we could probably change the name of the section to to falsifying active use. And, yes, yes. And recognizing the fact that, that that's all it really is. And mm -hmm. with that title and maybe with a couple of tweaks to the language there, that conveys the, the message that we want. When you say you're falsifying active use, it's, it's very clear then that you're not it's not the real thing 
that's not as good as the real thing and maybe that's that's better than than what we have i'm gonna, I'm gonna make a pull request for that straight away yeah, I, I i like that and i, I think to chris's point like it helps it, it may help to not overuse the word grease as like the title for the strategy um so we can describe it in these more abstract terms yeah yeah, I, I like Greece as like what it was intended for, which is like re reserved code points. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and as we're talking about the structure there, so I think this section on invariance is something that wasn't there in the very first version. Uh, and it also doesn't really fit, seems to fit at this position. Um, is you know, that ordering? No, I think it's more that it should be somewhere in the kind of introduction of background part, just kind of explaining invariance as a concept that needs to be known to understand um, where else you need to grease, right? It's not like really part of the solution. It's more a definition. Well, can, can, um, would it be possible to move it to section three, perhaps? Although it is... I mean, I, I do find that it is a defensive design. Um, I, I, I agree that like active use version negotiation, cryptography in Greece or whatever we're going to call it, like, you know, artificial active use or something seem to be of one ilk. Like they are things you do. Um, so for me, the, the message would be right. Um, so the invariants are there to ossify and you know that and you write it down. And everything else, you need to make sure it it stays extend or it's chase, ch changeable in that case, and so you have to act on it. Would it help to even just maybe I'm, not to say that we shouldn't start with active use, but it's almost like it's a prerequisite. Okay, I could almost just see it being like at the top of the list of things you do for defensive design, like. First, decide what points need to be used and what points. The document is called "Use It or Lose It," right? And that's exactly the point. This is the losing uh, part. <laughs> this is uh, on the, the topic of where you know that you lose it. On the topic of invariance, just a quick slight aside that I thought was in, would might be interesting. I had a conversation yesterday with Ryan Hamilton, um, where it was like uh, right after the quick uh, intro. We were talking about you know using versions versus using extensions for new features, and I mentioned to him like I was surprised that Google Quick like relies relied so heavily on on versions. Even like let's say when they added the datagram frame, it was a new version. And uh, he made the really good point that when they first started this, they had no idea what the invariants would be. They didn't know what they were doing, where they were going, and so it's really easy to look back and say, well, yes, the client hello and Google Quick had an invariant format. The version field being there had an invariant format. These bits were variant. Those turned out not to be. But when you're at the beginning, it is a lot harder. And I thought that was an interesting point in you know, the design of all these things. I'm not sure if it's, this is something that we could, mm -hmm. that would be useful to add to the document, but I thought it was interesting to noodle about. Yeah, I, I think that's that's why actually I think this like the whole quick story is really nice because it got developed and deployed within a company and then it came to um to its standardization. That's exactly how it should be, right? And at that point you should know more already. I mean, how it should be, you know, like we we are also designing standards at the ITF, right? We're not only doing uh things that other companies have done before. I, I know and I'm and I enjoy it, but like it would be so much easier if everything would be tested and well. It, it's good to have real world use cases yeah. motivating everything we do in engineering rather than Yes, yeah, so, you know, good to have use cases, absolutely. But like, you know, there's a there's a difference between the oh, please do all the work and show yeah. up and then we'll put an ITF stamp on it. And uh, you know, let's uh you know, I mean that's like, also you know, not what happens to to get. Get. but there's like a lot of experience on it. Yeah. Anyway, back to the yes stuff here. Um, so I guess you know, we're bringing up the section on invariance, kind of its position 
also, I mean, I would also kind of ask the same thing for the effective feedback. Um, it's a it's a little bit different. Um, yeah, so it, I, it, I think the the list in section four looks like a nice list, but then somehow it doesn't fit. It's not on the same level. All these different things. So. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think we can we can insist on having them all adapt like exactly the same strength. Obviously, yes. the first one is the most important. Uh, the second one might actually be almost as important, uh, if not more, depending on um, your view. Like Ryan seems to take the view that the version negotiation stuff is more important than being able to do the extensibility thing. And I, I at some level, I agree. Um, and yes, we like crypto and then we get into the weaker stuff. And uh, the ordering is kind of deliberate in that way, but um, mm -hmm. it's only approximate in terms of what we think are the, are the best options. I think it's um, doing things like saying, um, changing the way the text gives the impression of, of um, the value of things is, is the, the right way to, to level set on these. Like, yeah, but I, I don't think these are kind of like comparable um, options, right? The version negotiation is a little bit like something that you could also call active use probably. It's just like giving you more detail about how to do things specifically about, about versions. And, and greasing is like how you get active use if you don't actually have active use. Yeah. Which is which is far less in terms of goodness, obviously. But um, it's like it's more a little bit like a tree or whatever. It's like what you want is active use and like here are different like in different situations, different things you can do. Well I think you you could argue you have like active use for extens extensible protocol elements, the version negotiation itself, and then you have grease as your filler yeah invariants are also a, a form of weak protection that sort of falls on that second tier of well maybe it's going to work and maybe it's not crypto also to some level is yeah. on that second tier because you can't protect against someone who has the keys and but that's we're, we're, we're... key failing in a lot of protocols yeah so crypto just helps you to protect against uh in network ossification yeah or about reducing the number of parties uh which is you know something that's mentioned earlier in the um yes in, in the draft i thought that was a, a really good way to put it yeah. doesn't it also run the risk of like uh like, triggering potential misbehavior though like i just keep falling back on ech like the fact that we're using ech is probably going to make some people upset um and the networks might behave differently because they have ossified on the fact that they already have the clear text and not the cipher text. So, like, I don't know. It cuts both ways. Oh, yeah, of course. I think I think to the point that um, ACH is a new thing uh, is is part of the problem there, right? So, if we if we started with everything encrypted from the outset, uh, then yeah, no problem. Um, and once you manage yeah, to fair. encrypt things, then then you're in a better, better state than you were before. But, yeah. That's true, that's true. Yeah, I, I don't know, I'm not, yeah, I'm not necessarily seeing a better way to structure it other than like, I mean, we can go like full, super, super nested, but I don't know if that would add a lot of yeah, going too nested oh, yeah. makes things harder to read, I think. Uh, some of that. Well, and also it feels imbalanced, you know? It's... It reminds me of the uh, the old, oh, this is a proposed standard. All proposed standards are equal, right? Um, that's, it's it's not really the case. And I, I don't think anyone reading through should be getting that impression. And if they do, then that's a problem with the text and not a problem with the structure. yeah i mean yeah that's true i mean like you, it's it's not only about the structure it's also about the words um but i wonder if this really has to be a list like this or if it would be stronger if you have like two or three main sections here um one on active use and then a separate one on on crypto um and then maybe a separate one on invariance or put invariance somewhere else i don't know yeah i'm not sure I, we'd have I, enough text to fill those well 
Well, yeah. I think it's the same text. Um, yeah. I, I, I think we can leave it as it is, but even if we were to go down that road, I would almost say, you know, group it to say you have active use and you talk about active use version negotiation in Greece is kind of like the story there. Crypto and invariants, I feel like, are things that are less about using the deployment. They're a little bit more like these decisions you make of saying, hey, I'm going to choose these as invariants. I'm going to choose to use crypto. And then it's kind of orthogonal from using it or deployment. It's just like, I did it and I hope it worked. I hope it helped me. And then effective feedback is almost like the other end of saying like, it's not even really about the protocol necessarily itself. It's just like the super active, like keep paying attention to how your protocol works. Um, but there's like there's different levels of activity and engagement. And yeah. I think what this is all pointing to, and maybe is like the thing we need to, maybe we'll never figure it out, but like we could talk about in the future is that thing of like, you know, what is this cadence? And it's like realizing that protocols are not static things that there are cadences that they have to their evolution of their lifetime. And that determines both how often we need to use them and change them, but also what type of feedback mechanisms and cycles we have. Yeah. So, so I, I, I think like the one thing I'm, I'm really unhappy about this list is that it has like um equity active use on the same level as everything else because i think active use is really the main point here so it should be should be you know its own main section or whatever it should be more in focus or it's kind of like the summary of the whole thing <laughs> yes um. yeah, I'm, I'm struggling with structure things um the it may be that um the way to structure this is there's there's a section four which has active use, and um, yeah. as the title, um, and yeah. we then sort of carve off the, the 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 secondary things like the invariance and the feedback. Um, maybe not the grease and maybe the crypto. Oh, I don't yeah. know. Um, into a and other other techniques for managing sort of that way. Yeah. So with that. yeah, how about Martin, you, you said you were going to kind of propose some changes on how we talk about Greece and filler and stuff. How I have you done do so that? already. Oh, you've already done so. Oh, lovely. Um, I don't think we probably have time to review and merge it right now. No. Um, but let's merge that in. And then I, I can just write up an issue to, I can try to take a stab at rearranging the things and we can just see if we hate it or not. Yeah, I, I think it's probably going to be reasonable to say two, two lists of three items would yeah. work. Yeah. Um, and, and what's interesting about that is that the 4.1, which is basically the what is active use, kind of becomes the top level for a, a new section. And then you have two subsections underneath that, which is version negotiation as it relates to um, active use. Because version negotiation is just active use at the next layer up, as we yeah. already established. And Greece, which is fake active use. And then that's the section. And then all the rest of these things get moved into a sort of other, other tools you can use to make the protocol extensible. And I see Miriam nodding, and that makes yeah, me happy. Yeah, I really so. like that. Yeah. That works yep. for me. Great. And that would be invariance. Yeah, I think crypto is so, probably. I, I put crypto at the top of the list on this on that other thing. On that one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So then, crypto invariance and feedback. Okay. Good. No, I think it requires a little bit of thinking so that it doesn't end up with a title like other things you can do or the yes. word other at the start because there. But, I, yes. I would almost be tempted to put crypto and invariance together and then have the effective feedback be its own section just at the end of saying, hey, you need to. You know, yeah, let's, let's see how it all pans out. Yeah. Yep. Great. Okay. So. But it's a little a bit like other good advice, by the way, if you're looking at it, right? Anyway. 
Okay. It, it is, but I don't like other or considerations right. as as titles. But yeah. fully agree. Okay, um, we are pretty much at the hour, but I think we're, you know, getting eyes on this and making progress. And Do you think there's an anything... issue um, uh, on the, the threat model? Um, uh, I, I don't know if we want to address it at all. Um, you mm. can feel free to close it, but like, and we're at the top of the hour anyway, so we, we can just kind of move on. So, sorry, I just hadn't seen that yet. Um, That's fine. Some some thinking on that might be necessary. I think you've probably got some ideas here that would be useful to, to work through. Whether or not it changes anything in the document, and I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, I can try to put down some thoughts in a in like a PR of sorts if it would be useful. But um... uh, I think having a PR would help because yeah. I, I like the idea in general, but I wouldn't know how to write it. Uh, but if you have a PR, then we would totally use to say if it makes sense or not. Um, yeah, I'm perfectly fine with PR or GTFO. Like, <laughs> that's a reasonable response. Yeah. It's it's not quite that. Uh, it's just that like there are cases where it's like, okay, I don't, I can't be bothered. This is a okay. I think there's something here, but I don't know how to write it myself. I've assigned um, it to you, Chris. All right, very good. <laughs> all right, wonderful. Um, yeah, thank you all for your time. And, so what's the yeah. what's the sorry what's the what's the timeline here? I mean, this document has been around for a while, and I think it's in pretty good shape. And uh, sure, we have some more things we want to discuss, but I think we should try to get it out the door in a reasonable amount of time. I I, I agree, and that that that's actually that's how I started the meeting. Like, okay, sorry, I, I, sorry for being late. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. No, um, yeah, I I think you know it's very close. I think if we polish these things, kind of with this group, I think you know. You know, before the next ITF, certainly we can just say, "Hey, let's get this out and do whatever our current process is for community review." And then, yeah, so aiming to get it fully published by the next ITF would be good. Uh, if not that, at least in the hands of the RFC editor by then would be nice. Then we should we should uh, try to figure out how we get to a version that we can um, run an adoption call for right. in the IB because we now also have this feedback round for adoption calls, right? Oh, so we should adopt it. It is adopted. It's draft dash. Oh, yeah, that oh, a long time ago. yeah. Sorry, that was this document. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so we all, all we need to do is yeah. like I got it. Our, our final review. Like we're just saying, like, hey, by the way, yep. we're about to publish no, this. Give fine. us any review comments. Um, that should be doable. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, and I think we have a few issues, but they're they all have owners. So if we like in the coming weeks, uh, like next, you know, try to have PRs for all those, we should be able to land them, and then you know by some point in May. Bring it before the IAB. Can we, um, can we, we meet again sometime? In May? Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Martin. I was going to say, yeah. can, we, can we meet again? Can we say, let's try to get the things we've been assigned to do done in about two, two and a bit weeks, and then mm -hmm. meet again shortly after that, and yeah. um, then just go through the, the yeah. issues and say, yes, we've done it. No, we don't plan to do it, and have a final sanity check. Because so there's a couple there that I, I, I suspect it's just the case that they've they were opened and we don't have forgotten. any place to fix them. Exactly. Yeah. It's not so, so much I, forgotten, I agree. it's just can't, right? It's just yeah, you know, or, we're out of scope or we don't want to. So yeah. So yeah. let's say the week of May 10th. Uh, let's see. That sounds good to me. Uh, May 10th. Yeah, it looks like a yield average week. Okay. I'll, um, Thursday is the holiday in Germany. I'll send out a doodle. Okay. And then we can figure it out from there. And um, uh, can I can I ask one more thing? Yeah. So I think like um, you know, for this this meeting was focused on this document, and like having a small group um, talking about it is actually very helpful. Yeah. Um, but I think what we're seeing here is that. Other, otherwise, people are not feeling committed to be part of the program, right? They might or might not show up. Mm -hmm. um, and we um, discussed about having memberships to actually kind of motivate people to actually, you know, feel being part, part of the program and so on. So I'm not sure, like, you know, if that's the best way of that works, whatever. But I think that's something we should consider again and discuss. Yeah, I mean, I've, been, I've 
been doing everything I could to try to make EDM more interesting personally, but you know, they can only get so far. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's largely schedules and stuff, but we, we've had some fairly consistent folks and I, I think on my end, you know, I, once, I, I would hope, you know, after this next meeting, we kind of move out of talking about just this document and talk, start talking about some of these other ideas and specifically around like these deployability cadences and how that affects things. Um, and I think that's a good time to also kind of solicit people to say, hey, pay attention, come back in. But yeah, we can chat. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm I'm not I'm not sure about this whole membership idea. If that's a good thing or a bad thing, and if we would have in person meetings, maybe more people would show up anyway, because then it's a different situation. Yeah. Um, but but like this whole point about membership for me was exactly that people feel committed and that people actually think they are mandatory to show up, right? Kind of instead of just like you know, it doesn't matter if I'm there or not, whatever. Yeah, I, f I feel know. like another way to do that though is also assigning issues and PRs and like. If if you're going to talk so, about, so I mean, as I said, th this was really focused on this document. And in that case, it it's actually nice to have a small group who are actually those people who are actually engaged about the program, uh, yeah. about the the draft. But like in general, if you have a more, want to have a more wider discussion, it actually is helpful to have a few more people as well. I think. Agreed. I think that what we've been doing of having interims specialized on documents with small groups and then meetings during ITF week when, you know, people are in the ITF mindset, the, oh, I have to, I'm going to pick between all these sessions. Oh, EDM sounds interesting. Seems to be working for us. So I, well, I'd say like. Well, right right now, now we've been having it just not the week of, but closer to. Um, so oh, we right. There you go. We discussed it at IAB Open. You're right. Um, right. Yeah. So, I mean, like this program I, I never had an in-person meeting, right? So we will see yeah. what happened when we go back to meeting. Yeah, totally okay, yeah. just like a point to consider yeah. and further talk about. So we know what to do in future. Yeah. Good point. Okay, All thanks right. everybody. Great to see everyone. See you soon.